Installation Instructions for Field Applied Full Back Siding Insulation. Genuine Full Back comes packaged with one square per bag and is stretch wrapped with six to ten squares per bundle. When properly handled, the bundle full back is not fragile. When full of product, the full back bag weighs approximately seven pounds, depending on the product and the profile. Full back can be stored outside. It's very light and should be weighted down and protected from the wind. On windy days, work on a wall away from the wind. When you begin your full back project, you will notice on the foam these little blue tracer beads, this will ensure you that you're using genuine fold back insulation that is covered on the warranty from Progressive Foam Technologies. Genuine fold back insulated siding is computer designed to work with a specific vinyl siding profile. Now make sure you use only the specific fold back product made for use with the vinyl siding make and profile to maintain the warranties of the vinyl manufacturer. A printed label outlining the contents of each bag is placed on the end of the bag. Full back is custom cut to fit the profile of any vinyl siding with a butt height less than three quarters of an inch. For vinyl siding with three quarters of an inch butt or greater, full back 125 is available. Full back 125 requires a larger J channel now, as we will explain later, so be aware of which product you will be working with when preparing for the job. Accessories to complete your insulated siding job. Corner Post. Easy Post Plus, an important product that makes square corners a snap and reduces air infiltration. Easy Post Plus will cut your corner post installation time in half. Easy Post. New Construction Corner Post Insulation for use with vinyl corner post with a siding receiving pocket of 1 and an eighth inch to 1 and a half inches. Inside Easy Post, all-in-one custom cut shim for spacing out and supporting inside corner post. J-Channel. In order for the J-Channel to properly receive the thickness of both the vinyl and the insulation, one and an eighth inch J channel is required for full back, and one and a quarter inch J channel is required for full back 125. Easy shim. Now, in the event that the proper size J channel is not available, then we suggest the use of Easy shim. Now, it's a helpful accessory which enables you to use 5 8 inch or 3 quarter inch J channel and still gets a proper installation. Easy cut knife. Well, although full back insulation can be cut with any thin blade knife, we recommend the Easy Cut Knife. Now it's available through your distributor. It features a long, thin segmented blade specifically for cutting full back. Easy Start, designed to be used specifically with full back siding insulation. Easy Start Starter Strip will ensure you have a level job and enable you to start the job correctly without fabricating a special starter strip. It features a 3-inch nailing hem, two rows of nail slots, and reinforcing ribs. Starter Adapter Now, Starter Adapter has been exclusively designed for use with all full back siding insulation products. Starter Adapter must be ordered for the specific profile full back with which it will be applied. Window Surrounds Window Support Surrounds Gives window casing the solid look and feel of real wood. It provides a strong, supported, and rigid casing surround. It also eliminates open or loose miter cuts at corners, and it tightens laps. Preparing the wall before installation begins. The quality of any siding job is only as good as the quality of the wall surface that the siding is installed over. Now in normal situation, full back can be installed right over the old siding and will span the gaps in an uneven wall, providing a level, finished installation. Hey Randy, how's it going? Hey, morning, how are you? Good. Hey, we recommend a weather-resistant barrier every time you remove old siding or expose bare wood and other wall components. 
You know, you're going to run into a lot of different situations when you're installing your full back. And in order to get that look and feel of solid as a rock, you might want to consider the following suggestions. When installing full back siding insulation over cedar shake siding, we recommend that you either tear off the shake or sheathe over it with half inch flat foam panel to provide a flat, solid base for the full back panels. When installing full back siding insulation over a block wall that uses furring strips as a nail base for the siding, place 3 quarter inch by 13 and 5 eighths by 48 inch foam panels between the furring strips to provide a flat, solid base for the full back panels. These panels should be available at any building supply location. When installing over old siding with exposures over 8 inches or shadow lines over 3 quarter inch, you may want to tear off the old siding before installing full back siding insulation. Although full back can be installed directly over these types of siding, you will not be able to achieve a true wood-like feel due to the large gaps behind the foam created by the old siding. Tearing off the old siding will provide a flat base for the new siding and enable a much stronger installation. However, a tear-off is strictly up to the judgment of the installer. When installing full back siding insulation over an existing siding product, there is no need to use a weather-resistant barrier. Step 1. Installing outside and inside corner posts. You want to begin your insulation job by adding these corner posts. Full back easy posts are about four foot in length and not only do they insulate, but they square and shim the job. Easy posts can be cut with any thin bladed knife or a circular saw. Easy posts accommodate for the base thickness of full back siding insulation and are required for proper installation. Cut the corner post to length according to the vinyl manufacturer's instructions. Next, cut the foam to match the length of the corner post. Insert easy post plus outside corners into the vinyl corner post. With easy post plus inserted, install corner post as per the vinyl manufacturer's instructions. Inside corner post. If using a manufactured inside corner, an Easy Post Plus for inside corners is also available. Insert inside Easy Post Plus corner behind the vinyl inside corner. Nail through the vinyl nailing flange. Step 2. Installing lineals and J-channels. Cut the lineal to size and insert the full back support piece before locking into place and nailing. Note. Shimming behind the lineal is required only if lineal has less than 1 and 1 8 inch pocket. J channels for windows, doors, and trim work. In order for the J channel to properly receive the thickness of both the vinyl and the insulation, a 1 and 1 8 inch J channel is required for full back, and a 1 and a quarter inch J channel is required for full back 125. Now, if your distributor doesn't stock the appropriate J-channel, your distributor can order Easy Shim, which will help you space the J-channel away from the base of the wall. These shims can be installed under the standard J-channel. This will allow the full back insulation to be installed next to the shim and the siding can fit into the standard siding trim pocket. Step 3. Installing the Easy Start Starter Strip. Now when you start your insulation, you want to start with this Easy Start Starter Strip that accommodates the thickness of your full back insulation. Just follow the recommendations on your manufacturer of your siding. But there are a couple other useful hints that you should know. First, snap a chalk line to establish the wall line according to the manufacturer's specifications. If using a starter adapter, Insert the groove of the starter adapter over the outer edge of the Easy Start starter strip, making sure the back of the starter adapter is flush against the nailing face of the starter. Second, allow a quarter inch space between the starter strips and adjoining siding accessories to allow for expansion and contraction. Helpful hint! 
For best results, alternate nailing high and low in slots provided. Step 4. Installing the first course of vinyl siding. Attach the siding panel to the starter strip. Then before securing the siding to the wall, rotate the top of the panel away from the wall and drop a piece of full back insulation behind the siding. It is very important to install the siding first and drop the full back panel behind the siding to ensure proper location. Do not nail the foam to the wall first. Note, full back is a three or four course product, which is 27 inches, 30 inches, or 32 inches tall. Therefore, the second, third, and fourth courses of foam will protrude above the first course of siding. Now it will be covered when you install the second course of siding. Fully seat the remaining full back foam panels in the first vinyl course and butt the foam edges tightly together. Three full pieces of full back will support the length of one siding panel. Move the siding panel fully into its final position and nail it to the wall through the vinyl hem and foam in accordance with the siding manufacturer's directions. Helpful hint. In keeping with the Vinyl Siding Institute installation instructions for vinyl siding, we recommend using a nail that penetrates three quarters of an inch into the furring or framing. All right, that looks great, fantastic. Now remember this vinyl siding is designed to be hung and supported by these siding nails. You don't wanna nail them too tight. Now to check it, you can move this panel horizontally back and forth for free movement. Attach the next siding panel to the starter strip and install the full back in the same way. To ensure flat, tight seams, be sure to install the full back behind each siding lap joint. Please note, the foam panel will expand and contract naturally and does not need to be slotted for the nail shank or installed with a gap between panels. But the foam panels tightly together and tight to the corner post and window lineal. Step 5. Installing the next course of vinyl siding to cover the next course of fullback. Cut the siding to fit the area to be covered. Attach it to the siding panel below. Move it into position against the fullback. Nail through the nail hem and foam according to the vinyl siding manufacturer's instructions. Note. To ensure the vinyl siding and fullback panel maintain their proper alignment, Make sure the distance between the top of the vinyl panel's nailing hem and the full back panel's butt above the hem are of equal distance along the panel before nailing. Step 6. Installing the second course of full back. Cut the vinyl siding panel to fit the area to be covered and attach it to the vinyl siding panel below. Just like you did with the first vinyl panel, Make sure you seat the foam panel to the mid-butt of the vinyl panel only. Let the vinyl guide the location of the drop-in foam panel. Do not align the foam panels to each other. This will disrupt your vinyl panel arrangement. The resulting gap in the foam is part of the product's design that accommodates for irregularities in the wall and siding products. Then follow the instructions provided in steps three and four. Step seven, installing full back at the top of the walls and under window sills. Now there are several ways to apply vinyl siding under windows. You may wanna just continue with your current technique, but there are some situations that may require some modifications. Well, for example, Due to the cut height of the vinyl panel for the top course or under windows, you may need to nail a three quarter inch J channel inside the J channel you are using to securely fasten the panel. Sometimes you may even use a utility trim inside the J channel depending on where the vinyl panel profile is cut. To install full back beneath a window or gable, measure the opening to be filled or covered with full back. Cut the full back to fill the opening. Insert it into the space to be filled, then cut the siding to size and shape. Install the siding and nail it according to the manufacturer's instructions. Step 8. Installing full back in tight places. 
Measure the opening to be covered with full back, then cut the foam panel to length. Insert foam into the space to be filled. The foam should not be nailed, but allow to follow the vinyl when locked up. Cut the vinyl siding to length. Install the siding and nail according to the vinyl manufacturer's instructions. Now in cases where the distance between the vinyl siding trim pieces is very close, nail the trim pieces as you move up the wall with the full back and vinyl siding. This allows you to pull out the trim pieces enough to tuck in the vinyl siding. In cutting around penetrations, use a mounting block where possible. Otherwise, measure and cut the full back pieces for the spaces needed. Do not tack the full back in place. If the nail head is above or at the top of the foam, it can wear a hole through the siding. Keep the proper alignment of the profile butt with the other panels. Step 9. Installing full back from scaffolding or ladders. Hey, here's a great little tip. You can either tie or tape your full back product bag to your ladder or even nail it to the wall. Gives you easy access to the product and it also makes a very handy throwaway bag. Step 10. Handling full back on the job site. Hey, these empty full back bags can be used to pick up your trash and store it away. Works for me. Well, the rest is easy. You just want to simply work your way up the wall following the instructions from step three, four, and five. Now you can see why fullback is probably one of the greatest breakthroughs in the vinyl siding industry for years. Fullback is all about superior design, ease of installation, product support, and field tested performance. You know, a job with fullback is like no other vinyl siding job. There is no other product on the market that is as effective in closing sales and increasing referrals than fullback. Well, my name is Matt Fox, and on behalf of all of us at Progressive Foam, thanks for joining us.